Watch as I turn a boring Cinema 4D project into a gritty cinematic masterpiece in After Effects. It's a fun and simple process that creates striking results. My name is Cameron with Motion Science and welcome to today's motion design training. Let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are in After Effects and you can see on my timeline here, I have seashell copy.cinema 4D and that's because what we're seeing here is a Cinema 4D file. You can see the ground plane, the grid, and it looks pretty bad at this point. Now, if you don't know, you can import Cinema 4D files into After Effects, and all you do is go to File Import or double click in your project window, just like you do any other file in After Effects, and it brings it right into After Effects. So let me jump into Cinema 4D here, and you're gonna see, again, here is our same view, and if I back this out, you're gonna see we have a camera here that's looking at the seashell. And we have a very simple light that's sitting over the top. If I turn that off, that's the seashell without light. Very basic. Now, if I look through the camera by clicking this button here, this camera is parented to a null here in the center of the frame. So if I click play here, you're gonna see that the null is rotating on the Y axis. And because the camera is parented to that seashell, it's rotating around the seashell and we get a look that's just like this. If you're curious about Cinema 4D, but intimidated by its complexities, I encourage you to check out our Cinema 4D Quick Start course and Cinema 4D workshops in our Motion Science membership over at motionscience.tv mastery. Inside, you're gonna find tons of easy to follow training and projects just like this one. So go check it out after the video. Now, if I jump back into After Effects here, I've changed my viewport in Cinema 4D to look at the seashell. So that's gonna do the same thing here in After Effects. It's going to change to where we are looking through the camera at the seashell and we're rotating around it just like this. So if I go to my effects window, you can see that Cineware was added. This is an automatic process whenever we drop a Cinema 4D file on our timeline. And I'm gonna change it from viewport draft to current. And that is going to update the render to be a full resolution render like we see here. And if I close this, the only other thing I did is I applied a curves effect, very simple curves effect, right? It's kind of boosted some of the highlights and it's very, very subtle, but that is on now. So you can see this is the render of the seashell and it's just rotating around just like this. So still very basic, but what we can do at this point is we're gonna move to the next section and we have our pre-render here on our timeline. And what I did was I brought in this sacred geometry like we see here. It's just a vector graphic. And to it, I applied a rotation from a zero keyframe to all the way to the end here of 358 degrees. And that is to create a perfect loop. So it rotates around and then loops back to the beginning and it creates a perfect loop. Now, I want this geometry to be a part of the seashell. So how do I do that? I need to make the geometry 3D. And that's what this layer above it is. It's 3D. Now, we can't see that geometry because if you remember back in the Cinema 4D file here, our camera is parented to a null here. And so the seashell doesn't actually move. So if I want the sacred geometry to look like it's part of the seashell, I need the sacred geometry to react to this camera. Now, how we do that inside of After Effects is we can select our Cinema 4D file and we can come over here and we can extract the scene data just by clicking this button here. And you're gonna see on the timeline that a bunch of data is showing up. Now we have a light and a camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete those and turn this seashell back to locked. That is what this camera is here. So if I turn this on, it automatically sees our geometry sitting here. Now, what I did to get the geometry in the right place is back in the Cinema 4D file, I placed the null where I wanted that to be at the top of the seashell right here. And you can see the null is 0, 40, negative 40. Now, a lot of times in After Effects, we have to reverse a number or two to get it to work just right. So for this case, I had to reverse the positive 40 to a negative 40. So if I click P for position, you're gonna see it's zero, negative 46.5 or negative 47, and a negative 47 on the Z axis. So if I preview it now, you can see that sacred geometry is, looks like it's part of that seashell, right? It's rotating with that seashell. Now there is some weirdness because right here, 
it looks like it's kind of like the seashell becomes transparent. It's just an illusion. At this point, the sacred geometry should go behind the seashell. So moving into our next composition, that's what we're gonna do here. So we have our sacred geometry that's going in front of the seashell. So how do we solve that? It's really easy. All we have to do is take our layer and I'm gonna hit Shift Command D to split that layer. And then at this point right here, and I'm gonna go a little bit further down here and I'm gonna to get to a point where it can be revealed in front and I'm going to Shift Command D again to split this layer. Now, I have some layers hidden here to show you what I did. And what I did was this first layer here is in front of the seashell. And then where I split it, I dropped this sacred geometry behind the seashell. You can see it's behind it. So now it's truly behind the seashell. And then at this point here, where I split it, the sacred geometry is on top of the seashell, like we see here. And now it looks like the sacred geometry is in front and then behind. In front and behind. So it's a pretty cool way of compositing 2D graphics with 3D graphics. So let's move on to the next part here. What I wanted to do next was bring in some type of interesting background. So what I have here is I found this photo of a forest. And right off the top, this looks pretty bad. You can see it just doesn't match. It's, you know, the seashell is black and white. The sacred geometry is black and white. And we've got this very saturated, vibrant forest. So what I did was I applied a few effects here. So the first effect I applied was a tent to make the background black and white, just like so. And then I also applied a camera lens blur effect and the blur radius is set to 25 and that's just to blur it out just like so to make it much more interesting. So now it looks like this seashell is kind of floating in space and there's this out of focus forest sitting in the background. So it's already looking way more interesting. Let's move on to the next composition here. And what I did here was I applied an adjustment layer over the top. I'll turn that on. And I applied a series of effects here. And the first one I applied is a transform with a expression applied to the position property. If I hit UU on the keyboard, you're gonna see under position, I've applied a wiggle expression of 50 times per second. That's what the 50 is. I want to move a value of up to three pixels. So now when I play this back, you can see it's just a shake that's happening. And you know, for some people, this is gonna to be too much. For this particular example, I think it worked really well. So that's the first thing I added. Next, after transform, I added a CC vignette and I cranked the value up quite high. So this is without and this is with. And the vignette is just creating emphasis on the center of the frame here. It's just darkening up the edges and making the center of the frame more of our focal point for our eyes to look. Next, I applied two versions of the built-in After Effects Glow. The first one I applied is just a threshold of 60, a radius of 172, and an intensity of 0.6. And after that, I applied a second glow, again, a threshold of 60, a higher radius of 462, and a lower intensity of 0.3. So let's just take a look at this now, but it's already getting much more interesting at this point. So now our next composition is another adjustment layer over the top. So I'm gonna turn that one on. And for this one, I applied a red giant effect called Misfire. And you can see it, it adds even more contrast, it darkens it up, it actually adds a little bit of a blur here. And you can tell under effects, I've got softness applied, and that value is fairly small. I've got saturation applied, I've got splotches, dust, and lastly, a post contrast filter applied. And with that third party effect, it's starting to give it this really interesting old school, old film vibe. It's got a lot of flicker to it. And we're almost there. It's really, really close. It's all about the subtleties at this point, just to make it even better. One more adjustment layer. And you may ask why I didn't apply all of these effects to one adjustment layer. I like to have flexibility in my workflow. So a lot of times I will apply certain effects to certain adjustment layers and then layer those adjustment layers. We're gonna turn that one on the top. And the first one I have applied here is a small camera lens blur, a radius of three. And that's just to soften things up just a little bit more at this point. Next, I've got a posterized time 
applied of 16 frames per second. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slow down that really smooth motion and give it a more of a stop motion feel. But you can see, especially like in the flickering, it makes it look really old school and it's a really cool look. And then the last effect I applied here is a uni exposure blur. This is again by Red Giant. And I've got a keyframe here set at the beginning, and this is just to transition things on. So I will turn that on and you can see it's just kind of blown out, very blurry. But as we move forward, it gets less and less to finally reveal our image here. And then as we move further down, again, I added a few keyframes here just to give it some visual interest. So it kind of over the course of two frames, it gets blurry and hot and then goes back down to nothing. So let's preview this and take a look at it. And there you have our final render. Pretty cool stuff, right? If you look at what it was to begin with and what we created just from a very simple Cinema 4D project to this, it shows you the true power of compositing in After Effects. If you've enjoyed this After Effects training, you're gonna love the in-depth version available in our Motion Science membership. Inside, I take you through my entire creative thinking process in much greater detail, and I provide you with the project file to explore. By diving deeper, you're gonna learn how to think like a professional motion designer and solve creative challenges and elevate the quality of your work. I'll see you next time.